Hey, welcome back. This next section, we're going to actually solve some differential equations using the Laplace transforms, and you'll sort of see, okay, I'm glad we did that. And uh, anyways, uh, in order to do it, we need to be able to do first inverse transforms, and then secondly, the transforms of derivatives. So if you know the, the uh, if you have the uh, transforms from the last section, 7.1, I'll memorize, it shouldn't be too painful. I'm hoping it's not going to be too painful. You may have to, again, make some note cards and uh, kind of quiz yourself on a daily basis. Um, usually I, I would kind of have them memorized as I'm driving and loop through them in my head. I wouldn't be looking down at... Well, I, I shouldn't recommend that. It's, it's hard enough driving sometimes in traffic without... Yeah, so don't do that while you're driving. But... Um, yeah, you know, as you're walking around, well, maybe not even as you're, if you're walking around campus, <laughs> probably a low probability of you getting run over or hit by a car or something. So, yeah, just be careful when you're studying, I guess. Yeah, there's always a loophole here. But, um, yeah, make note cards, make flash cards, basically, and kind of get them all memorized. So, anyways, let's take a look at the inverse transform. So, um, part one inverses so basically you're going from some function of s and trying to put it back in the sum function of t all right so example one you have part a laplace inverse of one all over s to the fifth okay so um Right, I would be able to do this a lot easier if it was really, um, what, uh, four factorial all over um, s to the fifth, right? Because in that case, it, it'll conform to what we already know about transforms from 7.1. Um, in other words, if you, if you recall, the Laplace transform of something like I don't know, t to the 6 would have been um, 1 all over, whoops, let's go 1 over t, to, Laplace of t to the 4th would be 1 all over s to the 5th with, a, with a, a 4 factorial on the top. So if I, just going in reverse, I know the Laplace inverse of 4 factorial all over s to the 5th is just going to be t to the 4th. Right? But we don't have that. We don't have the 4 factorial. So how do I fix that? Well, you're just going to multiply um, by 4 factorial all over 4 factorial, basically. And you could rewrite it like this and then factor the 1 over 4 factorial in, out front of the transform. So you can kind of generate or back engineer what you would like to see. And once you've done that, then, okay, I know the the kind of reverse of that, that's just going to be t to the fourth. Right. Um, okay, so let's look at part b. So in this guy, you know, what what is, so it looks like the Laplace of some sine function, right? Sine of the square root of 7 except if you were to find the Laplace transform of that, what would it be? Well, it would be s squared plus 7, sure enough, but in the numerator, you would still have that square root 7 issue. So again, if you don't like what you see, you can kind of back engineer it, doing this, you know, multiply top and bottom by radical 7, and you would have ultimately then, well, I mean, I could do it step by step if you prefer. Um, so I literally, give me the eraser, please. I mean, you could write square root 7 all over square root 7 times 1 all over s squared plus 7. And then uh, you could rewrite that, Laplace inverse of 1 over square root 7 times square root 7 all over s squared plus 7. And again, you know, you got your hands on the thing that you know the Laplace transform of. You're going to be able to do the inverse of that part. Right, just factor out the 1 over root 7. Laplace inverse of that other junk. I can do that easily. Um, so it's just going to be 1 over root 7 times sine of root 7t. Okay. 
Um, again, note this thing is tr is linear, and what's going to happen in a lot of these problems is going to turn into kind of a, a partial fractions issue. Now, example two isn't that bad yet. You could still kind of get away with example two just using linearity. Oops, and then plus six. So to, to do this one, um, butterfly the fraction there. So you'd end up with a negative 2s all over s squared plus 4. And then plus the plus inverse of 6 all over s squared plus 4. Then you kind of back engineer, you know, that first one's going to be some sort of cosine. So Laplace inverse, you can factor out the 2 all together, or negative 2 in this case. So negative 2 Laplace inverse of s all over s squared plus 4. And then that's clearly just cosine of 2t. And then the next guy, you can factor out a 6, but then you got to, you know, play the game, right? You got to multiply top and bottom by 2. So it would be a 1 half times 2 all over s squared plus 4. So I get negative 2 cosine of 2t plus 6. I'm going to factor out the 1 half, so I get a 3 sine of 2t. Okay. All right. But um, ultimately, they're partial fractions is what we're going to be looking at. Um, partial fractions all over the place, really. Let's look at example 3. We want to do a Laplace inverse of this thing, s squared plus 6s plus 9, all over s minus 1, s minus 2, s plus 4. Okay. All right, so these are, there's linear factors in the denominator. So you'll have 1, 2, 3 fractions for each denominator, one for each factor in the denominator. And then in the numerators, you get A, B, C. Right. Multiply to get rid of those denominators. S squared plus 6S plus 9 is going to equal A times S minus 2 times S plus 4. Plus B times S minus 1 times S plus 4. And then plus C times S minus 1 times S minus 2. And then you could do substitutions to figure out your A, B, and C values. So let S equal, I guess, uh, 1. On the left side, 1 plus 6 plus 9 is 16. And then you have... Um, plugging in 1, you get a times s1 minus 2 is negative 1, and then 1 plus 4 is 5, and the other two terms because will be 0, because if you plug in 1 for s, you'll get a 0 factor. So 16 is negative 5a, so a is going to be negative 16 over 5. Let s equal um, 2, so plugging in on the left, you get 4 plus 12, which is... Uh, 16 plus 9 is 25 equals, the first term will be 0, and then b times 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 plus 4 is 6, so b would end up equaling 25, 6, and then let s equal f negative 4, so I would get 16 minus 24 plus 9 equals c times negative 5 times negative 6, um, 25 minus 24 is 1 equals negative 30c. So c equals negative 1 30th, which totally seems crazy. But So we had the Laplace transform of, uh, inverse Laplace transform of negative 16 fifths all over s minus 1. Um, plus, or if you want to start factoring out, 25 6 Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 2. And then minus 1 30th Laplace inverse of 1 all over s plus 4. So I'll be getting uh, negative 16 fifths e to the t plus 
plus 25 6e to the 2t, and then minus 1 30th e to the negative 4t. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess I, I must have screwed up the c part. So negative times a negative is positive. All right. Negative times negative is positive, 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 positive. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Um, so there is that. The, the other key thing we need is the tr transform of derivatives. So section 2, I guess, 7.2.2. I'm going to just say section 2 transforms. Of derivatives. And we can go back to the original definition um, and take a look at the transform of Laplace of the uh, derivative of the function. Okay, okay so it's going to be 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f prime of t dt. You could do by parts on this thing again. So u um, you want to make that e to the negative st and then dv f prime of t, right? Because then v will just be f. Uh, du will be e to the negative st times negative s, the chain rule. And then we could do the uh, by parts. So it's going to be e to the negative st f of t um, from 0 to infinity minus this integral, which become plus the integral of e to the negative st f of t dt, which, you know, is just the Laplace of f of t. Okay. I was saying Laplace, and I accidentally put an L instead of my infinity symbol up there. Anyways, um, the first part there, uh, because we kind of said in the previous section for you to be able to figure out a Laplace transform, the function has to be bounded above by an exponential, okay, a factor of an exponential. In other words, when you plug infinity into this thing right here, it's going to go to zero because of that. It's going to come down to uh, the e to the negative st sort of dominating okay, in your limits, and it's going to go to zero. And then plugging in 0, you would get e to the 0, so it's minus then e to the 0 times f, e to the 0 is just 1, and then f of 0. Okay. And then plus this other thing, which is just a little plus transform of f of t. Okay. Um, it looks like I, I lost my s there somewhere, I apologize, so it's times s. And the way we're going to write it in general, uh, in general for first derivatives, the Laplace transform of f prime of t is just going to be s times the Laplace of f of t uh, minus f of zero. Okay, and uh, the pat it has a pattern to it which carries on from there. So f double prime of t is going to be s squared. Laplace of f of t uh, minus s times f of 0 minus um, just 1 times f prime of 0. Okay. Um, then Laplace of, of course, f triple prime of t is just going to be s cubed Laplace of f of t then you take the exponent of s down one, so s squared f of zero minus s f prime of zero, and then minus f double prime of zero. Okay, so that's the sort of the pattern. And in general, 7.2.2 gives you the full blown generalized version of that. Okay, but once we get this, we're going to be able to solve differential equations, which is kind of ultimately our deal. So the, the way it'll work is you're going to do the Laplace transform of the differential equation. Then um, you're going to solve for the sort of uh, function in terms of s. 
and then you'll do a inverse Laplace transform at the end to figure out the original function. Okay, it's pretty simple as long as you have everything kind of memorized. All right. So let's look at. Uh, and there's going to be partial fractions involved. Let's go ahead and look at number, I guess, 16, 18 here. So now we're actually doing differential equations, solving initial value problems. Two, three, solving linear differential equations. Um, so number 18. Right. So here I got y prime plus 3y equals e to the 4t, and y of 0 is 2. So you do the Laplace transform across the board. So I got the Laplace of y prime. So I'll have to use my newly uh, derivative, my newly found derivative formula on that. Then three Laplace of y, then Laplace of e to the 4t. So on the left, then the Laplace of the derivative is just s Laplace y minus f of 0. In this case, we, our function is called y, so y of 0. Then plus 3 Laplace y equals the Laplace of e to the 4t is 1 all over s minus 4. Then you're going to solve for the Laplace of y. Okay, so you have s times the Laplace of y plus 3 times the Laplace of y equals 1 all over s minus 4. y of 0 is 2, so that would be plus 2. Okay. Factor out the Laplace of y, and you have s plus 3 equals 1 all over s minus 4 plus 2. If you want to combine those two into one fraction, that's fine. They're on the right, but it's not necessary. Uh, anyway, solving for the Laplace of y, that's going to be 1 all over s minus 4 times s plus 3 plus 2 all over s plus 3. And then all you got to do is Laplace inverse. The only problem is uh, to get that, you're going to need to do a partial fractions on this first one. So anyways, the function y will just equal the Laplace inverse. The solution will just equal the Laplace inverse of this stuff. Okay, so this first term, I got to do a partial fraction decomposition. The second term is just, you know, it'll be 2e to the negative 3t. But the first one, I got to do a partial fraction. So here we go. It's 4 times s plus 3 equals a all over s minus 4 plus b all over s plus 3. So 1 will equal a times s plus 3 plus b times s minus 4. And then um, uh, let s equal negative 3. So 1 equals negative 7b. So b equals negative 1 7 And then let s equal 4. So 1 equals 7a. So a equals 1 7 So plugging that back in, um, our y function will be the Laplace inverse of 1 7 all over s minus 4 minus 1 7 all over s plus 3 plus 2 all over s plus 3. You can combine those two last, these guys. Um, but, you know, it's going to be y equals 1 7 e to the 4t minus 1 7 e to the negative 3t plus 2 e to the negative 3t. And of course, I can combine those. So 1 7 um, 2 is the same as 14 7 So this would be plus 13 7 Whoops, I lost my e to the 4t. Third time is a charm there. 1 7 uh, e to the 4t plus 13 sevenths e to the negative 3t. And then that would be it. Right. Yeah, just making sure it's right. 
Okay, it's pretty simple. Um, it's kind of cool, pretty simple, but uh, some memorization involved. Let's try, um, I guess, 20, 22, 21, or 23 even, maybe. Let's try 21. Okay, so 21, I have y double prime plus y equals root 2 sine of root 2t y of 0 is 6, y prime of 0 is 0. Okay, so I need the Laplace of this thing, Laplace of y double prime plus the Laplace of y equals um, root 2 times the Laplace of sine of root 2t. Okay. Um, Laplace of y double prime is just going to be s squared Laplace of y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0 plus the Laplace of y equals root 2 times root 2 over s squared plus 2. So it's just going to mean 2 all over s squared plus root 2 squared, which is 2. Um, I need to solve for L of Y, so I'm getting like S squared L of Y plus L of Y minus Y of 0 is 6, so minus 6S, six and then Y prime is just 0 all over 2 all over S squared plus 2. You can move the 6S to the other side. Um, I'll have L s squared plus 1 l of y's equals 2 all over s squared plus 2 minus 6s all over s squared plus 1. Oops, I didn't. Uh, so it's just my plus 6x, plus 6s. Overthinking maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go ahead then and just to make life easier, I'm going to find a common denominator on the right side before I move the s squared plus 1 over. All right, so this would be s squared plus 1, s squared plus 1, and that would be 2 plus 6s cubed plus 6s all over s squared plus 2 times s squared. Well, it should be plus 2, right? So then it'd be 6s cubed plus 12s. Okay, um, all over s squared plus 2. So. Then, uh, okay, so I rewrite this 6s cubed plus 12s plus 2 all over s squared plus 2, then divide the s squared plus 1 over. So I get L of y equals 6s cubed plus 12s plus 2 all over s squared plus 2 times s squared plus 1. Let me just pause for a second and make sure that's right. I think it's right. Take Laplace inverse on both sides, so your function y will equal the Laplace of this thing. Right? You need to do by partial fractions again. Alright. So partial fractions on that thing. These are non-linear, uh, irreducible quadratics in the denominator. So you need a fraction for each factor, again, as usual. But in the numerators, you put ax plus b, and then cx plus d for the second guy. Okay. Uh, as, not x, excuse me. I'm so used to doing it in calculus. As plus b and then cs plus d, okay? Okay, multiply through to get rid of the denominators. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to equate coefficients. So FOIL So get all the cube terms equal to each other. So a plus c equals 6. The coefficients of s cubed on the right is equal to the coefficient of s cubed on the left. Okay. Um, get the, the s squared terms together. So b plus d is 0. There's no s squared on the left. Um, then the S terms, so A plus 2C is equal to 12. And then finally B plus 2D is equal to the 2. Okay. Um, B is equal to negative D. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to work out. Uh, so over here, negative d plus 2d is equal to 2. I'm just substituting in this junk. Uh, so I get d is 2, and then b is negative 2. Uh, a is equal to 6 minus c. So I have 6, and plugging that now into here, I have 6 minus c plus 2c equals 12. So I get 6 plus c equals 12, so I get c equals 6, and then a will apparently be 0. Okay. So the thing I'm trying to find the transform of, which will be my answer, the inverse transform that is, um, b, negative 2 all over s squared plus 2, plus c, 6s, plus 2 all over s squared plus 1. Okay. So y is the first guy. I could factor out the negative 2 from the inverse Laplace transform, and then it's just um, Laplace inverse of, I'm going to want to put in another 2 to make it, or a square root 2, right? So square root 2 all over s squared plus 2, and then times 1 all over square root 2 plus Laplace inverse of the second fraction, but I'm going to split that second fraction into two, right? So 6s all over s squared plus 1, and then plus Laplace inverse transform of 2 all over s squared plus 1. Okay, so to make that second guy work out, you can factor out the 6. So let's move the 6 outdoors. And then it would just be a cosine of t. Um, for the second one, I'm going to factor out the 2. And then it's just, uh, well, yeah, you don't need to kind of normalize it or whatever. Um, so anyways, you get negative 2 over root 2 sine of 2t two plus 6 cosine of t plus 2 sine of t. Hopefully, so 6 cosine, negative 2 over root 2, and I forgot the root 2 inside here. Sorry about that. And then 2 sine of t, yeah. So that's the idea. It's pretty cool, pretty simple, and uh, yeah, you just got to get those transforms memorized for the test. I'm not going to let you use uh, cheat sheets on the test or anything, so... Got to get those transforms memorized. Once you do that and get a little more practice with partial fraction decomposition, hopefully you'll be okay. And uh, let's call it quits for this video. Thank you for watching as usual. I will see you next time.